He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Let's all bow our heads in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for another great day of life, Father. Father, we please pray, Father, that every Sunday and Sunday, Father, that um, everything we do will glorify you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. I don't need to tell you that we don't live in a perfect world. There have been shootings, killings, everything in the world that God, God created us to be perfect. And because of sin, all these things have been happening. And a lot of the saddest thing I think that's been happening is that people have converted to Hindu and Muslims. And to me, that's the saddest thing that's been happening. Because we know that there's only one God. And those Hindus and Muslims worship false gods that will never get them anywhere. So people always ask, well, what can I do to help these Hindus? And the answer is simple, by sharing the word of God. And uh, a lot of people have this um, feeling that, OK, let me go share the word of God. But they hesitate. And let me tell you one thing. If you have a feeling that God is telling you to share the word of God with someone, even if it's someone you don't know, do not hesitate. Because in doing so, you're basically telling the Lord, your Father, Lord, I'm not going to do it when I want, when you want me to. I'm going to do it when I want to. And is that right? No. Uh, I want to start off with this example. Um, a pastor was in a hotel, and uh, there was a waitress who he felt the Holy Spirit was telling him to talk to. So he said, you know, I'm not really in the mood today. It's been a long day. Let me do it tomorrow. Day two comes. He, uh, he has that same feeling again. He says, well, you know, I don't think he might be interested today. I mean, poor guy. He was probably serving off other people. Um, let me do it tomorrow. Day three comes. Man, you know I have a big sermon tomorrow. Hey, let me do it. Uh, next. Let me do it tomorrow. Day four finally comes. He says, "Okay, this is the day when I'm finally going to show and share the word of God." So he goes to the manager. He asks the manager, "Excuse me, I'm looking for this waitress." And the manager says, "I'm sorry, sir. He died last night." The pastor was so upset that he went to his own room took a gun out and killed himself. Now I'm not saying do something that dark, but I'm saying don't hesitate because the Lord gave you life and the only thing we can repay is by sharing the word of God. But the problem is that people think that they have the Holy Spirit telling them to share the word of God, but they don't really because they don't really know Him. And they end up giving lies to people who don't know God. So um, without taking so much time, I want to go into a few things that will help you share the word of God. Number one is living a godly life. Jesus once said to his disciples, just by looking at you, people should know that you're my disciples. And by just looking at you, know, just by looking at us, people should know, okay, there's something different and they're always happy. There's something different about them. I want whatever they want. Um, in fourth grade, we were reading this devotion. Um, there were two kids. One was a Christian and one was not a Christian. So the, non so the non-believer goes to the Christian and asks me, why are you so different? Why are you not like the rest of us? The Christian goes, what are you talking about? The non-believer says, every day, no matter what happens to you, if you're bullied, if you're kicked, you never try to hit back. You're always happy and you always pray to this God. Why? It's because, and the Christian said, it's because I have the Lord with me and I know that He gives me happiness. Just by looking at you, people should know, okay, whatever this guy has, I want that. And if you're out kicking, if you're out, if someone kicks you and you kick back, or if someone curses you out and you curse them out, do you think you're going to be a Christian? No. So if you haven't lived a godly life, start today. And the second thing I want to go over is not getting involved in earthly things. Earthly things I'm talking about smoking, drugs, gossiping. Now I haven't seen people do the first two, but I have seen people who say that they're Christians and start gossiping about somebody else. Let me tell you something. Gossiping is basically just making fun of what the Lord has created. And in the Bible it tells us that the Lord has created us perfect and flawless. And by you just going off, oh, man, have you seen how stupid he is sometimes? He can really uh, drive me nuts. Man, have you uh, seen how stupid his hair looks today? Can you believe that? By doing so, you're basically putting God's creation into the dirt, and that's wrong. So then uh, if you have a complaint about someone, pray for them. Why do you have to go and tell somebody else? Because of that the person who you're telling is just going to go make it worse for you. You could just go tell the person who you're gossiping about, and that's just going to make it worse for you. So the next time you have a complaint about someone, Please share it with the Lord instead of with other people because those humans can only make it worse for you. And um, by doing that, uh, in one way we can um, people get drive into smoking, casinos, gambling, is by your friends. A restaurant once said to this audience, you show me your friends, I will show you your future. Because the people we decide to hang out with, 
the people who we instantly say, okay, I'm going to hang out with these people, can instantly change your life. If you're hanging out with people who go out, gamble, go to um, drinks, and all that stuff, then how do you, and you're doing the same thing, how do you expect yourself to go to heaven? But if you're living with godly people who love God and want to be with Him, you're on the right track. And I'm starting, and I wanted to say this. If you have somebody in your life who doesn't know God and who does these things, drink, you know, don't just ditch them, okay, see you, I'm not going to hang out with you anymore. Um, you know, you haven't been living this godly life here, all the other things. No, try to correct them. Hey man, this is not right. Just try to correct them. And if they hear it, that's good. If they don't, oh well. And the third thing I want to go over is finding time in the day just to pray to them. And a lot of people these days say, well, you know, work really got me up. You know, I have so much work. If you're one of those people, shame on you. Because the Lord gave you life. The Lord gave you a roof over your head. He gave you food. And you can even spend five minutes in His Word. It is wrong for us to think that we don't have, that we don't need to pray to Him and we don't need to spend time with Him just because we're Christians. As Christians, God wants to get to know you. He wants to know you personally. And if you're one of those people who hasn't been praying to the Lord, start today. Go into a room and just pray to Him and get to know Him. And He will really show Himself to you. Um, there was a Hindu doctor once who had this pastor as a patient. And you know, doctors ask those regular questions. How much do you weigh? How much sleep do you get? Um, how, much, how many times a day do you brush your teeth? And this Hindu doctor says to a pastor, How many times a day do you pray? The pastor must have been startled. He asked, What did you just say? The Hindu doctor said it again. How many times a day do you pray? The pastor said, I don't pray at all. Now, can you imagine how embarrassing that must be? You're supposed to be someone, you're supposed to be someone who people look up to and say, okay, I need to follow this guy. I need to try to um, be exactly like him and try to live the godly life that he does. And you're not even spending some time with the Lord. If you start today, and a lot of people will just still say, well, you know, I have a lot of work. What can I do? You have 24 hours in a day. And I'm sure you can at least find five minutes to go and pray to Him. It is amazing what God can do to you, what God can do when you spend time with Him. It's like an airplane. An airplane is just a chunk of metal. There is nothing about that chunk of metal that's supposed to make it fly like that. If I go out on the street and find any piece of metal and just chuck it up into the air, is it supposed to fly like that? No. But it's how engineers craft it. It's how they craft the wings, how they craft everything that makes it that can make it fly like a bird and make it soar in the air. That's exactly what Christianity is. We start out like a chunk of metal, people who haven't got to know God. And then slowly, as we start to get to know Him, He starts to use us and mold us into the thing that He wants us to become so that we can do things that we could have never imagined. Once again, I'm saying to you, if you haven't started, if you haven't prayed to the Lord or read your Bible, start today, and I can guarantee you 100%, it will change your life. And Finally, the last thing I want to go over is persecution. I don't need to tell you what Christians are going through these days. I don't need to point that out because we all know what Christians are going through. ISIS, Al-Qaeda, they have been persecuting people. Not because that Christian has killed somebody that they love. Not because that Christian has cursed at them. <clears throat> it's because they're simply Christians. And they say that they're Christians. And a lot of people these days they go, Oh man, why can't God just leave them alone? Why, do we, uh, why does he have to do this? It's because Jesus never promised us an easy life. He never went to his disciples and those who believed him and said, Man, listen, you're going to have an amazing life when I go to heaven. Everything is going to go your way. Nothing wrong is going to happen in your life. No. He even predicted Simon Peter's death. But as persecuted, we are promised one thing, and it's in Matthew 5.10. Blessed are those who are persecuted, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now can you imagine how precious and how holy that is? You're being promised something better than a good life, something better than gold, riches, silver. You're not being promised the kingdom of God. That's more precious than the life you could be living right now. You could be a millionaire and not, you could be a millionaire and still have a lousy life in heaven. Um, one, before um, I end, I just want to go over a few examples of those who have been persecuted. Um, one is one of my anonymous closest friends. Nishamama. She's been living in heaven for at least 70 years now. And no, she wasn't born a Christian. 
Back then she was a Punjabi, and her husband was a Punjabi. And um, they used to worship their false gods until finally, Nishamama finally found the Lord. And when, <coughs> and when the um, husband found out, he said, why did you do that? Why did you go to that god? Go back to being a Punjabi. Nishamama says, no, I'm sorry, I can't. I know that the Lord is my God, and I know that He's the only God that I need to go to heaven. The husband was so upset. He took a knife out and cut. The husband was so upset. He took a knife out and cut her ears and nose off. Now, can you imagine what that must be like? That's supposed to be the love of your life, and He's out doing something like that. That's what people. That could be your closest friend. That could be anyone who doesn't know Christ, and they can still be persecuted like you let that. Um, another example I want to go to is a pastor. This Indian pastor who calls it blessing in his own. He was handing out tracts in a New York subway station. Suddenly, one man grabs him by the collar and yanks him back into a corner where nobody's there and starts beating him up ruthlessly. And this shocked me. The pastor figured him at that instant that he was able to get the tracks and run after the guy who was beating him. That's the kind of strength that the Lord gives you when you're being persecuted for him. And he gives you that forgiveness. And a lot of people, and a lot of Christians may say, "Okay, you know what? Uh, I don't care about this guy anymore. He just beat me up. Let him just go to hell because I tried." But that pastor was forgiving, so forgiving that he hindered, that he got those tracks and ran after the guy who just beat him. That's the forgiveness that God gives us all when we are really His Christians, when we are really His people. And um, the last example I want to go to is uh, one of my heroes in the faith, Richard Rumba. Back in the year 1941, it was illegal to share the word God because communism had just come into this country. So Richard Rumbat knew that that was wrong. So he used to have these secret meetings about the Lord, and he used to tell the and he used to tell the Christians before they left, make sure you hide your Bibles so that nobody sees them. And one day he was caught in the act. He was arrested, and for eight painful years he was put in solitary. And the reason why I say painful is because. Every day, he was beaten ruthlessly. He wasn't given a chance, he was beaten ruthlessly. And one day, I think this was the eighth year, I believe, one day he was finally um, done with the beating. So he started praying after the beating. So then um, the soldier asked him, who are you praying for? And uh, Richard Rumba, this really shocked me over. Richard Rumba says, I'm praying for you. That's the forgiveness that God gives those who are persecuted. And I just want to close with this. Being persecuted is actually a blessing. It's a great thing to say that you were persecuted for the Lord because you're guaranteed a spot in heaven. And a lot of people, and a lot of Christians say these days, well, I'm a Christian, but here's the greatest test as a Christian, and I can guarantee this. The greatest test as a Christian is when you're walking, everything's going right, and then somebody sticks a gun or a weapon out to your forehead or anywhere on your body point and asks you four simple words. Are you a Christian? Those next, few those next few moments may instantly decide whether you're going to heaven or to hell. Um, I want to close with this. If you have someone in your life who you want to really be with when, they, uh, when you um, end this life in heaven, who you really want to be in heaven, then pray for them and start really sharing the word of God with them. And here's a challenge I have for you all today. The next time you feel the Holy Spirit, um, asking you to go preach to someone, even if you don't even know the guy, it could be somewhere in a stranger. If you feel the Holy Spirit asking you to share the word of God, go at that same minute, and I can guarantee you it will change your life forever. Can we all pray? Our gracious Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this wonderful day, O Father. Father, as we are um, ending with the sermon, of Father, please pray, Father, that you will give us the strength, of Father, to be able to share the word of God, Father, not be, and not be afraid to call ourselves Christians, O Father. I just pray, Father, that if we have to go to persecution, you will give us such strength, Father. And you help us to do it, O Father. And as we are um, continuing our way, Father, I please pray, Father, that you will give us the strength to go 